Hello, how's it going? Welcome back to some more Football Manager 2023 and some more of the Journeyman with Portsmouth. Today, we are back with our first transfer special in charge of Pompey. We survived on the last day of the season in the 2025-26 year. Uh, we're going into season five, of course, next year of the series and we're looking to try and build a promotion push into the championship. It's going to be a big rebuild this year, even though there's uh, not a lot of contracts expiring. I, I will be wanting to, to replace a lot of the players um, who I, I just don't think are good enough. So I think there's, there's going to be a lot to do today. Lots of wage budget to spend, lots of transfer budget to spend as well uh trying to invigorate this club and and bring in some youth blood in some youth but uh first things first we'll look at the season review of course i didn't have a lot to do with any of this so uh <laughs> you know it it seems a bit of a cheek really but uh i'll uh, take my ugly mug off and we'll take ourselves through the end of season review and we'll get a real idea of where we're at as a football club so uh, Signing of the season, apparently, Jaden Richardson, uh, who played five matches. Is that, that surely can it be right, can it? Uh, maybe there isn't a sign of the season. <laughs> uh, I mean, if you look, that they're, they're all pretty rubbish. Um, you know, Travis Patterson only got one goal, top assists five from Daniel Batty there. Top average rating was a six point eight six. Tony Knowles, I think we've got to change his name, haven't we, to Tony Knowles? Um, but yeah, you know, there's uh, there, there's a lot to do here. I think um, if we look at the the outs, certainly seems to to have gone a little bit better for those guys. Tom Lowry to Cardiff there, <laughs> Corey Nadaba to the New South Wales. Uh, oh no, it's the New Saints. I thought it was the New South Wales that that stood for. And loans out. If we have a little look, we've got Jake Perry at filed, Andre Kelly at Barnet, Billy Fuller at Gosport, uh, Dion Inglethorpe at Haven and Waterlooville, and Daniel Stacey at Bognor Regis. Not really any clubs of note there. But uh, this is a summary of the season. You can see a very, very up and down year for them. Uh, very, very few victories. But uh, it seemed to, to change in. January, you know, they got a lot of victories there. They must have been bottom of the table back then. Um, put together a good string of victories, which I guess that probably uh, set them off on, on their course to survive. Then went through another rough patch before sacking their manager. Two victories. Then we took over two defeats before two victories in the last three with our new tactic, uh, the 4-2-3-1, basically. Um, and uh, finished 17th in the end, which, you know, ain't a bad year. Uh, Mid-table, very much. And, you know, I think we've got we've to gotta look up the table and think, you know, a few more victories in there. And we can get up to the likes of Crewe and uh, Grimsby and, and whatever. And, you know, with a good season, I think we can get into the playoffs. Uh, into the FA Cup then, they went out in the first round to Fleetwood, of course, uh, probably my favourite ever team in the journeyman to manage was was Fleetwood uh, back in FM18. Carabao Cup went out in the first round of Wickham Wanderers and in the Pizza Trophy, uh, knocked out in the Southern Section group stage, lost to Oxford and Swindon, won against the Watford under 21, so... Okay, moments to remember this season. Biggest win was a 4-1 victory over Cheltenham on the last day of the season. That's uh, saying a lot, isn't it? Match to remember was 2-1 away to Leighton Orient in January. And uh, goal of the season was apparently uh, this Curtis goal. Can we have a little look? Oh, we can't have a look. That's a shame. That's a shame. Okay, never mind. But um, it was Ronan Curtis with uh, the goal of the season. Said he, he skins an opponent on his way to score in a skidding drive. <laughs> okay, the finances then. Uh, obviously, reputation hasn't changed. We have got a, a better sponsorship deal in place, but everything else has went down, including, including uh, broadcast revenue, corporate and hospitality, competition prize money's well down, and match day commercial retail is down as well. We only sold uh, 9,000 shirts last season, bringing in a total... Uh, merchandise sale of 
thousand pounds, and uh, Dale was the the best shirt seller. Curtis Odeur, Sheehan, and Bishop also in there. Uh, this is how the team lined up over the season: uh, Joe Rafferty, Sean Raggett, Latte, and Patterson in defence. Marlon Pack and Odeur in the middle of the park with uh, Josh Sheehan and Owen Dale and Ronan Curtis supporting Colby Bishop up top. Nathan Bishop, of course. Uh, moved to Hull mid-season, um, was a very solid goalkeeper for the club until that point, uh, and he moved in January, didn't play another match, so goalkeeper, definitely a position we need to sort out. Uh, here are the accolades then, fans player of the season, Ronan Curtis, young player, Jake O'Brien, uh, who is one of our central defenders. Uh, Ronan Curtis got the goal of the season, of course. Owen Dale, top goal scorer with 14. Marlon Pack, top assists with 8. Most player of the matches, Colby Bishop with 3. Highest average rating. Ronan Curtis with a 7.1. And Daniel Batty, um, 47 passes completed per 90 minutes. Competition awards, none. History in the making, your hard work and effort paid off and it didn't go unrewarded. Pompey's season started badly, sinking to 20th by September and struggling to meet expectations under new manager Joe Hannard as they were dragged into a relegation battle. Hey, don't bring me into this. Dynamic manager timeline then. Of course, we have a new club in there. This goes far too quick in my opinion. Um, but you can see collective things. We were we were sacked, of course. Um, let's have a little look on here. So one for the future. That mainly just talks about transfers, which I think is pretty boring, really. Um, investing in potential. I mean, all of that pretty much was, was signings. 100th match in charge was last season. We obviously got promoted. Um, is there anything... There's literally nothing that isn't transfers. It's very boring. And there you go. Welcome aboard at uh, Portsmouth. Um, resigned from the job at Chester, of course. Now, uh, Chester, of course, are going to be in the playoffs. So we'll keep an eye on them throughout this episode. They're playing Doncaster in that first round in a couple of days' time. Um, but we can end the season review now. We'll finish that. Uh, and let's just have a little look. So... Supporter profile, we've lost social media followers over the last season. They want us to develop uh, players using the club's youth system. Southampton, Brighton and Bournemouth are our big rivals. Um, and record a sky bet, League One top half finish is their expectations going forward. Supporters are pretty happy with uh, what happened last season, which is, is good. Um, club vision and expectations meeting, we'll, we'll look at that in a minute. There's our dynamics update. So in the dressing room, they're very, very happy. And uh, we are starting to win them over just a little bit. I think with our new signings over the summer, that should definitely help. Let's discuss our plans for next season. Um, let's say top half finish next season. Yep, yeah, they're, they're happy with that. Um, we, we can discuss promises for next season. That's fine. I, I never, ever, ever make promises I think it's one of the worst things <laughs> in the game. Um, squad end of season break, that's fine. So they're back on the 29th of June. Right, let's have a little look at what they're expecting us to do this season. So they want us to develop players using the club's youth system, that's fine. Work within the wage budget and grow the club's rec uh, reputation. That's something that we need to do over the next few years uh, and they're happy to give us a maximum of one year contracts to players over the age of 34 we won't be signing too many of them to be honest um our requirement is to be competitive in the fa cup nice that it doesn't have an actual um date on that uh and it doesn't seem to have any sort of league requirements next season which is interesting so we're kind of getting a year to do what we want. And then after that, they want us to record a Skybet League One top half finish. I mean, that all seems fine to me. If you're not going to give me any expectation. Oh, hang on. That's popped up now. Finish mid table in the Skybet League One. Okay. That's fine. Uh, and here are 
our initial budget, 99,000 in the wage budget, 1.5 million transfer budget. That is a decent amount, really. Let's have a look at finances then. So we're committed to spending 73,000, so that gives us 26k to play with, which is very, very nice. Uh, and 1.5 million in the transfer budget is a sizable amount. Um, and yeah, we'll see how we get on going forward. But looking at the squad, if we sort everybody by position, I think, you know, goalkeeper is, is the big one for me. We've got a couple of good cent central defenders, got a couple of uh, good backups as well. So really not a position we have to focus on too much. Um, right back's a, a, a decent position. Left back's decent as well. Perhaps a, a new right back as Joe Rafferty, 32 years old. Um, very versatile player, a bit of a Milner character in the dressing room, I would imagine. But, um, you know, not a lot uh, going for him reports-wise if we want to progress as a club, if you like. Uh, Travis Patterson, he's in on loan from Aston Villa. I don't know if we're going to be able to get him for another season. It would be quite nice if we did, though. Uh, Marlon Pack, as I've talked about, I mean, he's an old man, 35, in the middle of the park. I, I think we'll keep him about next season. But his contract does expire and he has got five grand in wages, which is one of the top top paid players in the in the squad. So he, we might be saying goodbye to him. Uh, Josh Sheehan and Daniel Batty will probably be about. Sheehan maybe not 31 years old and didn't really play a lot last season. Uh, Nua Hussein, I'd like to get rid of him. Only two-star ability. Uh, played 11 times last season uh, and the other position I, I really feel we need strength in is striker we've got Colby Bishop of course but um, you know not fantastic Tony Knowles in there Ronan Curtis can play striker but nobody's a real natural goal scorer so I think that's that's where we're looking at this season perhaps uh, a new goalkeeper perhaps a new uh, right back uh, midfielders in general and uh, you know a star striker uh, essentially is what we're looking for so good to know what we're we're keeping our eyes out for keeping our eyes peeled and um, we do have a, a few decent prospects down in the under 18s which is is good as well you can see lots and lots of good players there so potentially trying to breed some of them through over the next couple of seasons we may well take the pain try and do a, a massive clear out of of all their players and bring through youth and try and develop them next season if you like and and take the pain of a, a mid-table finish and really build for the the future by getting these guys ready for first team football because they're already two-star ability um you know there should be players that that could do a, a great job although it is saying vanarama north slash south so maybe that's saying a lot about the players at this club at the moment not being good enough for, for what we want to do. But, um, yeah, I'll continue on a little bit and I'll see you guys when we make a signing or uh, if anything interesting happens. Well, what a shame for Chester. They did lose 1-0 to uh, Doncaster. Not uh, brilliant for them. They were playing three at the back. Uh, it looks like Willock, Finney and Thomas had good games, but uh, they didn't create enough chances or oh, they didn't take their chances better xg but um yeah they didn't they didn't progress so chester will be in the vanarama national league next season it'll be interesting to see how they get on in the the post hanard era but uh south shields on penalties they're through to the the semi-final which is good so they'll be taking on stevenage in that match hopefully we'll see them in league two well, a bit of good news for you, South Shields are promoted to the Football League. They beat Doncaster in the final in extra time. Uh, Johnson and Helm with a penalty there. Uh, so South Shields will be playing Football League football next season. That is going to be really exciting and perhaps in a couple of seasons they'll be playing us. Okay then, first signing of the window, Harrison Burrows is coming in from uh, Peterborough United. He's going to be basically a Travis Patterson replacement, can play anywhere down that left-hand side, 24 years old. 
Can play left back all the way up to left wing. Very good attributes for those. Has been playing at Peterborough all his career. Was released earlier this season by the looks of it. Um, always done an okay job, but definitely think he can improve. But uh, looks like a decent player. Three-star ability, four-star potential. I think will definitely uh, be a good signing to get in there. He will be uh, joining us in the next week or so once the, the transfer window officially opens. But uh, very, very happy with our, our first uh, signing and we can allow him to join on trial, actually, uh, to make sure that he's training with us until signing permanently. That's a lovely little feature, that, actually. Uh, so Burroughs in, at the club uh, will be joining us on the 9th of June. But uh, a proper look at the coach report now. Leading player for League 2 at the moment uh, can definitely be a good League 1 player in the future. As I say, I do think we're in a little bit of trouble in terms of the, the quality of our playing squad. Um, you know, I think it is uh, it, it is very telling that, that some of our best players are only League 2 standard. You know, you look at Marlon Pack, only a good League 2 player. So I, I do think we are due a, a really big rebuild. You know, Owen Dale, only a, a good League 1 player. Paul Thompson, uh, a, you know, Skybet League 1 standard, could potentially be a Premier League player in the future if we can uh, manage him right. But... Yeah, as I say, I think it's going to be a big job over this summer. OK, another signing in the window then. Uh, Brad Young is our first goalkeeper that we are going to pick up. He's coming in from Ipswich. He is a 24-year-old English goalkeeper, has uh, played for Ipswich in the past in the Championship and League One joined them for 74k a couple of years ago. Uh, according to the scouts, he's three and a half star ability, four star potential, could potentially end up being a, a very, very strong player. You can see he's got some decent attributes. Um, yeah, looking forward to, to bringing him in. So he is uh, going to be our most expensive ever signing in this series 350,000 pounds so let's uh, bring him in straight away uh he will join us on the 9th of june we have got another transfer uh in the works as well uh, daniel adshead is potentially coming in from cheltenham was uh, one of their better players for the last few years as they've been in league one uh, looks like a decent central midfielder uh, can play in the playmaker role, but uh, decent attributes in there. Uh, had a good season in the FA Cup and Papa John's Trophy, so I'm, I'm hoping that we can surround him with better players and uh, make him a better footballer, hopefully. 24 years old, he's going to be coming in for, what's that, uh, 200,000, could rise to 450,000, depending on performances. Okay, another signing uh, to let you know about. Uh, brand new striker Ty Soji has come in from Cheltenham, uh, or will be coming in at least. He's a 22-year-old Nigerian striker, scored 15 goals in uh, 41 starts for Cheltenham last season. I do think we can we can give him better than that. Um, you know, I think a, a good player to, to pick up. Um, he played in a very poor Cheltenham side, uh, scored 24 goals down at League Two, so he knows how to find the net. Uh, we're bringing him in for uh, 800,000 or at least a deal that can uh, reach 800,000 if uh, all of the performance bonuses and whatever are, are found. But... Um, Yes, we'll we'll bring him in, and he'll come in as as our best striker, no doubt. You know, looking forward to to seeing how these signings get on. You know, we've brought in a goalkeeper, brought in that midfield player. Um, we're bringing in a, a right back as well, so we're you know we're nearly there with um where we wanted to to bring strength in. Of course, we're we're looking for more players. I think once the first of July comes about, that's where we'll really make a um a look at, at getting some some free signings in there but um let's have a little look at at Soji when he comes in hopefully he comes in now there you go three star ability four star potential so uh, we'll ask uh, Dale to welcome him in and he, he does come in as our best striker uh, at the club so yeah looking forward to to seeing how he gets on some uh, very good attributes and I think 
will be a cracking player for us uh, as a pressing forward, advance forward, whatever you like. Okay, fourth signing of the window is going to be a 20-year-old uh, attacking fullback called Sam Curtis. He is Irish. Uh, he's coming in from St. Patrick's Athletic uh, in the Irish Premier League. You know, he's done a decent job over the years. He seems like a very, very strong player um, to me. Three and a half star ability, four star potential. Uh, will probably come in as, as our best right back. Um, so let's welcome him to the club. He's coming in for a fairly uh, reasonable £300,000. Um, of course, our transfer budget, you know, will be reducing uh, as we make all of these deals. We've still got about £660,000 to go. We've still got um, a decent amount of wage budget once uh, we've released players on the 1st of July. Um, and I think maybe we're looking at, at free transfers now. I, I, as I say, I think we've done a good job in the window so far. Um, of course, Daniel had said as well, so it's actually our fifth signing of the window. Um, and starting to make this squad look a, a lot stronger now. Uh, you know, you're seeing the likes of Harrison Burrows in there. Sam Curtis uh, has come in. Sodji, Brad Young, Daniel had said, you know, in a, a very high amount of potential in there so looking forward to to see how this squad gets on i think it's um it's coming along nicely well this isn't a signing but a huge departure paul thompson our big homegrown prospect who uh, you know scored five goals for us last season um and uh, you know looks like a, a brilliant player could potentially be a skybet championship standard next in the next couple of years a good offer came in from nottingham forest uh 10 million pounds we are going to get him loaned back to us for the rest of the season as well i think this is a terrific deal for all parties you, you know this is a huge sum of money um we're going to be getting 6.5 million into the transfer budget as well we're going to be getting that uh, thirty percent percentage of of profit. Um, if he is an absolute superstar, you know I haven't seen that from him in the in the short time I've been here. Um, but you know, ten million pounds that is a huge sum of money, and uh, six and a half million into our kitty as well, which is is going to be absolutely huge. So Paul Thompson. See you later, son. But uh, he is coming straight back. Uh, he's obviously went and uh, done a good one in uh, Nottingham uh, celebrating his, <laughs> his signing. Uh, and he's going to be out for a, a week um, with food poisoning. But he is on loan until the end of the season, which is good. It means that we can we can still use him. And uh, who knows? You know, if he is a superstar this season, at least he'll help us potentially um get promoted to the the uh the, the next league up um new transfer in the works ricky j jones from peter brad did score against us in uh the match last season hasn't played wonderfully but i think he he looks like a good good player should be good i think i've had him in in previous uh editions of football manager um just got offered by an agent and uh his contract has expired at Peter Brad. They are keeping him on, um, but we have put in a 160k bid for him, which is lower than his 250k compensation clause. Um, and yeah, hopefully he will be joining us in the coming days. Okay, Ricky J Jones will be joining us then, uh, and we have got a few other transfers on the on the horizon. Um, so yeah, Ricky J Jones looking like a good player to be honest with you. Very very happy with this signing. Um, somebody that can play on the left as well as up front. He can play on the right as well. So I do think he is going to be a really important player for us and and how we want to play moving forward so for me that's a, an absolutely terrific sign and an absolute bargain fee as well uh, we're looking at 
signing this guy as well, Josh Knight from Peterborough. Peterborough have got a brilliant youth setup now. Josh Knight is uh, 28 years old. Um, he's going to be exploring options at the end of his contract next season. He's had a terrific time of things in this save so far, particularly in League One. Can play at centre back, can also play in defensive mid, um, right back, central mid. He's just a, a brilliant player, and I think we want a bit of him, <laughs> to be honest. Um, he's, he's coming up on all the scout reports as being somebody that we need to sign. Uh, the transfer offer that we've put in, so we're putting down £1 million initially, £3 million over three years, um, and then 500000 if he does play 50 games for us. And, you know... We've got a little bit of money to spend, so let's go and negotiate a contract then. Um, he is definitely going to be a star player for us. Let's see uh, exactly how much he's going to cost. I mean, wow, £32,000 per week. We just do not have that sort of money. He's only earning ten grand a week. What on earth is he on? Is he having an absolute laugh? I think this guy thinks he's fantastic, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, yeah, nah, you're not getting much higher, Sterner Claus. I'm sorry, Josh. <laughs> as good as you look, you're not worth that amount of money. That is absolutely ridiculous. Um, I have got another exciting signing coming as well. Here he is then, the goat of the journeyman, Mr. Paul Glatzel, who, of course, lit up our series in FM18. I don't think he's ever... Um, going to meet the potential that he had in that series, but I just can't turn down the uh, the opportunity to sign Paul Glatzel. 250k, really not bad at all. Um, he's on quite a hefty wage. That's uh, the only thing I would say uh, that's against him. I'd love to see what his uh, star rating is, though. Fingers crossed, it's going to be good. Ugh, two and a half. Ah, <laughs> ouch. Oh, I expected it to be a lot higher than that. He has got good attributes, though. Um, can play, of course, anywhere behind the striker or in that striker position. Um, has been playing well for uh, Dynamo Dresden up in uh, Germany. Um, had an OK season at Tranmere uh, in League 2 on loan from Liverpool. So... Yeah, looking forward to, to seeing how he gets on. I, th I think he will turn out better than, than what he's looking. Um, but for 200k, we we, we got we to gotta take a chance on Glatzel, the man who we got to break the Premier League record. We took him on a, a road trip around Europe. And um, yeah, you, you know, the just the thought of having him in League One again is, is an absolutely brilliant one. OK, another signing in the bank then. Ben Cottrell comes in from Lincoln. Uh, had a brilliant season last year. Five goals and three assists. Seven player of the match. That was the, the real uh, statistic that raised my eyebrows, basically, when I seen it. Um, he's going to slot in just behind the striker. Can also play left wing as well. Um, as I say, has come in for, for pennies again. 500,000, really not a lot. I think we are recruiting really, really well this summer. Um, we are creating a big, big squad. I think a lot of them are going to be uh, moving down into the reserves and whatever, and we'll, we'll really try and, and cut this down. But uh, overall... Uh, yeah, I'm really, really happy with this transfer window. And he has another signing then, uh, another one from Peterborough, actually, for £250,000. Uh, Kwame Poku, uh, a 24-year-old Ghanaian international, um, again, has had some very, very good form for Peterborough over the last couple of years. Um, didn't actually play in the 24-25 season, but before that, really, really good stuff. Um, has had, you know, his, his fair share of injury troubles, but uh, nothing too worrying. Again, can play uh, behind the strike or he can play on either wing um, or even in a, a deeper role as well I think again I'm really really pleased with that I think going forward we're going to be such a bigger threat than we were last season and that's got to be a good thing 
Right then, I think we're at the end of our transfer business for the summer. Certainly for now, we've got a, a full squad and uh, this is how we are going to be lining up for our first match against Forest Green Rovers tomorrow. Forest Green have been newly promoted. Um, we'll do a recap of all of the transfers in tomorrow's episode, but um, these are the 11 players. Of course, Brad Young starting in goal, um, our goalkeeper signing this year I'm hoping he will be a massive boost to to our team Brad Young Sam Curtis our young Irish right back comes in uh, there with Sean Raggett and Latte still continuing as our central defensive partnership Harrison Burrows comes in straight away at left back uh, one of our free signings from Peterborough United uh, Daniel Adshead and Ben Cottrell form a brand new look midfield uh, with Owen Dale continuing on the right Ronan Curtis continuing on the left and Kwame Puku supporting Ty Soji up top. So most of our um, summer signings in the first 11 there, we've got Glatzel and uh, Ricky J. Jones on the bench. Uh, they'll be looking to make an impact off that bench. And we've still got lots of, of good players from last year. The likes of Tony Knowles, Logan Pye, Jaden Richardson, for instance, Colby Bishop, who, of course, scored that brilliant goal um, in the last episode. Olawe Yemi as our backup goalkeeper and uh, Mazid Ogunbo, um, who is a young player, played 27 times for us last season. Uh, definitely somebody that I think will be good backup in central defence. Uh, so, I, you know, I'm really excited. I think we've got a really well-balanced squad. I think we've got uh, good support. We've got an excellent club atmosphere. Our managerial support is, is going up now. Um, there is still one unhappy player at the club that's um Rafferty who will be going out uh, on loan I think but uh, a very very strong pre-season as well Gosport we beat them 6-3 we beat Bognor Regis 3-1 Haven't and Waterlooville 2-0 and Notts County 2-0 nobody you know too difficult in in those matches admittedly but um yeah we'll be we'll be back for tomorrow's episode against Forest Green and Northampton Town in the Carabao Cup first round really looking forward to seeing uh, how this squad shapes up if we look at the season preview the media are predicting that we will finish fourth at the end of the year that would definitely be absolutely awesome if we managed it Owen Dale is one of the key players as is Latte um nobody else in there but two of the key players in the um in the division which is is fantastic uh coming down last year by the way were Preston Blackpool and Birmingham coming up Swindon Tranmere Forest Green and Gillingham uh if we look in uh, league 2 uh South Sh South Shields pardon me uh predicted to finish at 17th, when I had a look at that at the start of the year, uh, or basically when the, the squads turned over, it was 10th. And if you look at the media prediction, it is um, 15th in general. If we have a look at ours, let's see what they're genuinely predicting, 12th. Um, but the bookies, you know, they've got us um, a little bit higher up the, up the order. Uh, fourth place after all of our sign-ins over the summer. Um, very, very much looking forward to to seeing how we how we get on this season. But that, of course, is going to be where we leave it for this transfer special. If you have enjoyed it, then give it a massive thumbs up down below. Subscribe for plenty more football manager content, and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.